Hello everyone. Welcome to Al Jazari channel. In this video the hot rolling of steel sheets operation is extensively explained. Hang on for a minute. You explained this before. It would be better to show me how the rollers themselves are fabricated. Alright dear, let us start from the 18th century, when the first cast rollers changed the way industries shaped metal forever. What happened at this time? A special mold was built by hand for the roller. Here is the drag, which supports the weight of the mold and the molten metal in the mold cavity. The mold makers played a crucial role in determining the quality of the final roller. The produced roller is hollow. So, a core formed from hardened sands is carefully placed with great precision. After that, the cope was securely fastened and meticulously aligned to ensure a flawless casting process. Now, just as in the past, high-quality castings come from carefully controlled melting furnaces. Various required alloys are produced in the melting furnace to meet specific requirements. In this facility, a cupola furnace is used. Is there a quality check at this stage? Of course, yes, samples are taken, and once the batch is approved, the pouring process begins using the gravity casting method. How does the molten metal reach the mold cavity? Great question. The well-designed gating system ensures that the molten metal enters the mold in a controlled circular motion. This helps reduce turbulence, minimizes air entrapment, and promotes even filling from the bottom to top, leading to a more uniform and defect-free casting. Once the rollers are cast, are they ready for use, or do they require further processing? Roller blanks must undergo machining to achieve their final shape. This requires highly specialized machines. How has roller manufacturing changed over time? Is the process today very different from past? In many ways, a lot has changed, but at the same time, much remains the same. Modern technology allows manufacturers to produce rollers with extreme precision, tailored to their specific applications. However, the fundamental requirement, hard on the outside and tough on the inside, remains the industry standard. While advancements have significantly expanded what is possible, certain aspects of the process, like mold making, have changed very little. The production of small and medium-sized rollers today is still quite similar to the methods used a century ago. With all the technological advancements, isn't most of the roller manufacturing process automated now? Automation has certainly improved many aspects of the process, such as precision machining and quality control. However, some steps still rely heavily on skilled craftsmanship. Mold making, for example, remains a highly specialized task that requires experience and attention to detail. Even now, the craftsmanship of mold makers is indispensable. Roller molds are not mass-produced. They still require skilled manual labor. A perfectly built mold ensures that the roller blank has the right dimensions, preventing defects in the final machined roller. Any unnecessary excess material would only increase the already substantial machining effort. How important is cost efficiency in modern roller manufacturing? Given the economic conditions in the global roller industry, manufacturers must work as cost-effectively and efficiently as possible. The market has become highly competitive at the start of the new millennium, with prices calculated down to the smallest detail. To stay ahead, companies must balance quality, precision, and cost optimization without compromising performance. How much have rollers evolved in terms of size and production over time? In 1842, a newly crafted roller was considered a technical marvel. Today, rollers weighing up to 150 to 200 tons in their finished state are cast and machined. To achieve this, the initial casting, known as the rough casting, must weigh around 300 tons. This scale of production demonstrates just how far roller manufacturing has advanced in terms of capacity and precision. I see that the drag is completed. What happens after that? Once the drag is ready, the cope is placed on top to complete the mold assembly. Cores like these are produced using specialized machines and are made from cold hardened sand. They are essential when casting hollow rollers, 
whether as standalone roller shells or with integrally cast shafts. The mold makers are doing well to finish the mold. What about the metal melting process? While the casting mold is nearly complete, the metal melting process is already underway elsewhere. Modern furnaces produce molten metal with a high degree of homogeneity. Here, the molten material is transferred to the ladle, preparing it for pouring. How do they ensure the molten metal has the right properties for the rollers? To achieve the required material properties, various alloying elements are carefully added to the molten metal. This process is meticulously controlled to ensure consistency and performance. Key elements such as carbon, chromium, nickel, and molybdenum are added to adjust hardness, wear resistance, and toughness. Carbon increases strength and hardness while chromium enhances corrosion and wear resistance. Nickel improves toughness and thermal stability, and molybdenum contributes to high temperature strength and resistance to deformation. The alloying process is not simply a matter of adding materials. Precise calculations are required to maintain the correct chemical composition. How do they verify that the molten metal has the correct composition? Samples are taken and analyzed using spectrometers to verify that the metal meets the required specifications. This ensures that the rollers will perform reliably under extreme mechanical and thermal stresses in industrial applications. The molten metal is ready for pouring now, isn't it? Not just yet. Before the molten metal can be poured, the slag layer, impurities that float on the surface, must be carefully removed from the ladle. This step ensures cleaner casting with fewer defects. After that, the temperature is measured. If it is within the required range, then the pouring process can finally begin. Do roller manufacturers pour each roller individually, or is there a more efficient approach? Manufacturers aim to optimize production by grouping orders with similar specifications and chemical compositions. Instead of casting each roller separately, they schedule multiple rollers with matching requirements to be cast on the same day. This approach offers several advantages. First, it maximizes furnace efficiency by reducing the number of heating and melting cycles, which saves energy and operational costs. Second, it ensures consistency in material properties, as all rollers poured from the same melt have nearly identical compositions and mechanical characteristics. Third, it minimizes material waste and allows for better control over alloying elements, reducing variations in quality. By following this method, Manufacturers maintain high production efficiency while meeting strict performance and durability requirements for industrial rollers. You mentioned that manufacturers must use cost-effective production methods. How does this affect the casting process? Due to increasing market competition, manufacturers must adopt economical and efficient production techniques. One such method used in roller manufacturing is static gravity casting. In this process, molten metal is introduced into the mold from the bottom up through a controlled gating system. Unlike top pouring, which can cause turbulence and air entrapment, this method allows the melt to flow smoothly and evenly. The metal fills the mold in a steady, rotating motion, which helps prevent defects such as porosity, inclusions, and shrinkage cavities. Additionally, this technique ensures that impurities, such as slag and oxides, remain at the top of the melt and do not get trapped within the casting. The result is a roller with a dense, high-quality surface and excellent mechanical properties. This traditional yet highly effective approach remains widely used today, balancing cost efficiency with superior casting quality. How does the molten metal fill the mold? So precisely using this method. This animation illustrates the casting process in detail. At the pouring temperature, the molten metal has a fluidity similar to water, allowing it to flow effortlessly into every section of the mold's profile. This ensures that even the finest details of the mold cavity are accurately reproduced, resulting in a well-defined and high-quality casting. Are there differences in manufacturing smaller and larger rollers? Let's move away from the production of smaller rollers and focus on the heavyweights of this industry. As mentioned earlier, some foundries produce exceptionally large rollers, with finished weights reaching up to 150 to 200 tons. 
However, the initial casting, the rough casting, can be significantly heavier, sometimes exceeding 300 tons before machining removes excess material. Manufacturing rollers of this scale presents unique challenges, particularly in mold making. At these dimensions, the process operates at the very limits of what is technically feasible. Every step must be executed with extreme precision, as this stage lays the foundation for the final high-tech tool, the roller itself. How do they handle such massive molten metal during pouring? Large rollers require an enormous amount of molten metal, far more than a single ladle can supply. To meet this demand, multiple ladles are poured simultaneously to ensure a continuous and even fill. By the end of the casting process, approximately 300 tons of molten metal will have been poured into the mold. The alloyed and purified molten metal fills the mold, and then the roller enters a critical cooling phase. Unlike smaller castings, which solidify in hours or days, these massive rollers require two to three weeks to cool properly. This extended cooling time prevents internal stresses and ensures the structural integrity of the final product. Despite advancements in technology, casting such enormous rollers never becomes routine for those involved. Each casting is unique, presenting its own challenges and requiring careful attention to detail. No two castings are ever exactly the same, making every roller a remarkable engineering achievement. Is there another casting process used for roller manufacturing? To meet today's high-performance demands, centrifugal casting is being used more frequently in roller manufacturing. Centrifugal casting creates a denser structure, reducing defects and improving durability. In this process, the mold spins at several hundred revolutions per minute during pouring. This controlled rotation improves the structure and quality of the cast roller. Is this process visibly different from traditional casting? Yes, but in reality, much of the process is hidden from the view. The rapid spinning of the mold makes it difficult to see the details of how the metal behaves. Actually, I can't quite imagine how it works. So, to better illustrate this casting method, let's look at a laboratory experiment. Before pouring, the mold must reach full rotational speed. When the molten metal is introduced, it first settles at the bottom but the intense spinning forces it outward against the mold walls. There, it rapidly cools and solidifies. The thickness of this outer shell can be controlled with millimeter precision. Once the shell has formed, a softer core material can be poured into the center, ensuring the roller has the right balance of hardness and toughness. How is precision ensured during this process? At this stage, experience is critical, but it's not enough on its own. A stopwatch and a thermometer are essential tools for controlling the timing and temperature of each step, ensuring that the final roller meets exact specifications. Here, every minute counts. Let us go back to our casting. The core material is now ready for pouring, having reached a temperature of approximately 1,400 degrees Celsius. At this facility, rollers are produced using the centrifugal casting method with finished weights reaching up to 300 tons. All right, the casting is done, but what happens after the rollers cool down? Great question. Now, let's turn our attention to what happens after the castings have fully cooled. I assume the roller isn't ready for use yet, right? Exactly. We're back at the same facility where we observed the molding and casting of small to medium-sized rollers. At this stage, the rollers are carefully removed from their molds. One by one, the mold casing is cautiously lifted away from the solidified roller body to prevent any damage. What's that material falling off a roller? That's the remaining molding sand. Its job is done, so it crumbles away as the roller is removed. As you see, the roller and gating system are all lifted out of the casting bay together. Once removed, the rollers undergo thorough inspection. Depending on the requirements, they are either left to cool completely or subjected to specialized heat treatments and annealing furnaces. So, is a roller ready at this point? Not yet. After cooling and heat treatment, the machining process begins to refine the roller to its final specifications.
How long have specialized machines for roller machining been around? Let us take a break now and explain the finishing and testing of roller machining in another video. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Al Jazari channel for more deep dives into the world of engineering. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of engineering.